Hello, everybody. My name is Dr. Sarah Wooten. I am a small animal veterinarian. And in this video, I will sh be sharing with you everything you need to know about cat vaccines. So with kittens, there are core vaccines and then there are non-core vaccines. So core vaccines are the things that are recommended for all cats because of the, the commonality of the disease, right? How common it is how infectious it is and, and its level of disease, how much disease it causes, how sick it actually makes animals. So again, these recommendations are a combination from the American Animal Hospital, of, uh, American Animal Hospital Association and the American Association of Feline Practitioners, right? So these are kind of general guidelines. So one of the main ones you'll see is a combination vaccine called FVRCP, FVRCP. This includes feline herpes virus, which um, is very contagious and it causes upper respiratory infections and eye infections. <clears throat> it also protects against feline Khaleesi virus, very contagious, causes upper respiratory infections, some of them very, very severe. Sometimes it causes ulcers in their mouth. Khaleesi can be really nasty. And then the last one is feline leukopenia. And this is um, mistakenly called feline distemper. It's not distemper at all. It's much closer to feline parvovirus. Um, and this causes things like diarrhea, vomiting, fever, things like that. So Herpes, Khaleesi, and panleukopenia are the three viruses that are contained in FVRCP, and that will be likely the first vaccine that your kitten receives in between six to eight weeks of age. Then the second vaccine that all cats um, need to get is rabies vaccine. Rabies is a fatal viral disease that is zoonotic. It can be transmitted to other animals, including humans. Um, and it's transmitted via, usually via bite wounds. And so uh, that is a killed virus vaccine that is given at approximately, usually 16 weeks of age. Then there is the feline leukemia vaccine. So according to AHA and AAFP, they do consider it a core vaccine. Um, I was raised as a young veter veterinarian that it's not a core vaccine, that it's a lifestyle vaccine and that cats that are gonna go outside should have it, right? Um, feline leukemia is, it's not like cancer, like human cancer leukemia. It's a virus um, and it can suppress the immune system that can lead to lots of different infections and it can also lead to cancer, right? And there's no treatment for it. And it's kind of a nasty, nasty disease. And so whenever I had my kitten patients in, I would have a discussion with my, my clients about this vaccine. The thing about it is that kittens should not receive this vaccine if they've been exposed to the disease. How do you know? You can have a simple blood test run in most hospitals, they can do it in the hospital that tests kittens for leukemia and often uh, FIV feline AIDS, feline immunodeficiency virus, right? FELV and FIV are usual the blood test. You should not test kittens for these diseases until they're a bit older. So you shouldn't be testing them till at the earliest 12 weeks. I tend to test them around 13 to 14 weeks of age, just because sometimes you can get some false results on that test if you test too soon. And so generally speaking, we'll have the conversation when the kitten comes in for their, you know, 12 to 14 week checkup. I'll say, okay, here is uh, the information about feline leukemia. There is a vaccine available. We should test your kitten before we vaccinate them. And then they, and then clients will often say, well, do I really need to do it? And I'll say, well, here's the deal. It is recommended by AHA and the AAFP for kittens and cats under one year of age. It's recommended for all of them. It's not required, but it's recommended. And so if there is any chance that your cat will ever go outside, then I recommend having it. And most people go, yeah, 
yeah, you know, there is a possibility that the cat could go outside at one point. And so they'll often do the feline leukemia vaccine as the animal is a kitten. And then a lot of the, a lot of these people actually discontinue the vaccine later in life because they figured things out, right? They've got other stuff going on, but they'll often do it as a kitten. So there's my two cents um, on that particular vaccine. All right. So now that we know what the vaccines are that are out there, let's just review the vaccine schedule really quick. Most kittens will start their boosters between six to eight weeks of age. Then they go in to see the veterinarian for their health checks to check their growth and everything else that's going on. And when they're there, they will receive boosters. FERCP, they receive uh, anywhere from three to four boosters. Um, FELV, they get two and rabies, they get one. After your cat, your kitten receives their initial set of boosters, then they will receive additional boosters every one to three years, depending on many things. Okay. So when you bring your cat back for their one year physical examination, your veterinarian will talk to you about boosters at that point. And the boosters that they may talk about is rabies because that one needs to be boosted at one year of age, then the FBRCP one. And then if you elect to continue leukemia, that one. Okay. And then after that, most vaccines, depending on how they're labeled, move, go move to three years. And so then you just have your cat vaccinated every three years. If your cat is older, indoor only, zero infectious disease risk, or if your cat has other existing health conditions that make it not a good idea to vaccinate your cat, then you talk with your veterinarian about different things you can do, either extending the time in between the vaccines, um, getting titers run to check the antibody levels. The thing that the thing that we don't really know is how long do these vaccines last? How long is immunity? And I have seen studies that shown the immunity lasts anywhere up to seven years. I've seen it sometimes where it goes down after a year. So it's really variable and it's dependent on the cat, which is why we have standardized every three years. Having said that, no cat is the same. And if you want to talk to your veterinarian about adjusting your vaccine schedule, that is your right as your cat's advocate, right? You are part of the healthcare team. The only one that there's not really very much wiggle room on is the rabies because that is a human health concern. Having said that, you can actually have titers run for rabies vaccines as well. Not all states and munip municipalities will accept those, but some may. So it's worth doing the research if you are not wanting to do that vaccine that often. Okay. So that's out there. You have the information, do with it what you will. Okay. So now that we've talked about what vaccines are out there, the schedule for vaccines, we can talk about some of the risks. So um, there's always risks when you are vaccinating an animal. Similar to humans, some kittens or cats may have a adverse allergic reaction to vaccines. Now, when this happens, um, it can be very confusing for pet owners because they immediately want to blame the vaccine, but it's not really the vaccine that is the problem. It is that particular ca individual cat's immune system and how it interacts with that vaccine. So that vaccine has probably been given to thousands of cats, fine, and then one cat doesn't do well with it, right? So there is always the risk of adverse reactions, allergic reactions to vaccines. These um, can range from very minor to very severe. So the most common side effects are just, a, they're a little sore for a couple of days. Maybe they don't eat quite as well um, and they have a little bit of a fever. The fever is good because it shows the immune system's engaging and doing what it needs to do, which is make antibodies. Um, sometimes there can be some localized swelling as well. If your cat is very painful or having a hard time, or if they vomit having, after having a vaccine, call your veterinarian immediately and ask for recommendations. Sometimes they can actually have, uh, hives, uh, which is, those are bumps all over their skin. So if you 
pet your cat and suddenly feel all these bumps, or they can have facial swelling. Um, those are really important to keep an eye on because that's a more severe allergic reaction that can actually impede their airway. So if you ever have that happen to your cat, let your veterinarian know. Some things that veterinarians can do to minimize the risk is pre-treating cats with diphenhydramine or Benadryl, same thing, uh, before they have their uh, vaccines. And what that does is that reduces any kind of allergic reaction. So that might may be an option. But if your cat does have any adverse effects, I would strongly consider you to um, reconsider before vaccinating this animal again, and definitely talk to your veterinarian about it. Then there is, in some rare situations, something you guys should know about. It doesn't happen very often, but I would be remiss if I didn't tell you, which is something called a feline injection site sarcoma. So this is a tumor that develops at the site of the injection. Um, and it's malignant. Uh, it, it spreads very quickly and invades, uh, it invades the local tissue, right? So it has been associated in the past with the leukemia vaccine and rarely the rabies vaccine. This can be very aggressive um, and can require surgery and radiation. And if a cat develops this, they should never be vaccinated again with anything. And the ways that we minimize this is over the years I've been in, you know, I've been in practice for about 20 years now, they have purified the leukemia vaccine, down, um, purified it. And then we as veterinarians are very careful about where we give the leukemia vaccine. It, it should always be given either very low on the left leg. Um, some veterinarians will give it on the tail. And the reason is we're very paranoid as veterinarians. And so we always wanna make sure to not, if there is ever a problem, that it's a place where we could do surgery um, successfully, right? And if you are vaccinating these cats in between their shoulder blades, um, that's a lot more difficult area to do surgery because there's important things there. Lungs, hearts, spinal cords, things like that, right? So. Um, it's important to have the vaccines put in the proper location and then to use the purified versions. So lastly, um, let's talk about how much these vaccines cost. So vaccines um, can range anywhere from $15 for, for some of your low cost vaccines to $50 in some of the higher, higher cost uh, regions, right? Uh, I would say between 25 and 50 45 is what I see per vaccine. Um, when you take your kitten to the veterinarian, the other things that you're getting that are really, really important is that relationship building with the veterinarian, the physical examination, talking about parasite control, external and external, um, planning for your spay neuter, just developing you know, a healthy relationship in case anything happens in the future. If you are strapped for cash, there are low cost options. A lot of shelters will do um, vaccine clinic days. Uh, a lot of um, uh, like feed stores will have mobile vaccine clinics. Um, just go online and Google low cost vaccine clinics. Um, the only thing is rabies must be given by a veterinarian because it is a human health concern. I always recommend working with a veterinarian. Yes, it does cost you a little bit more. Um, but you know what's nice is a lot of wellness plans uh, through veterinary hospitals cover vaccines and some pet insurance covers vaccines as well. So vaccinating your kitten appropriately will help your kitten stay protected against disease and avoid spreading disease. And that's just one of many steps you'll take as a cat owner to make sure that your cat has the longest, healthiest life possible. So there you go. What do you think? <laughs> was this a good, was this a good um, explanation of vaccines? Do you know what you need to do for your cat? Do you feel more empowered? I would love to hear how this video is helping you. So leave me some comments in the comment section. And if you'd like to see more from me, go ahead and hit subscribe. And I will be back to talk about more feline health topics in another video soon. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.